I just graduated. Hello. Mm, who's texting me? My moron. Congratulations. Today starts the next journey of your life. As you graduate high school and move forward into the next part of your life, I am so very proud of you. Congratulations on all your achievements, all your accomplishments. You're going to get that diploma. You're going to graduate. Throw that cap in the air. I couldn't be more proud of you, brother. And to all the graduates this year, the class of 2022, you have been on quite a ride, quite a journey. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Alexa, stop. Sorry. I have no idea who that guy is. I found that TikTok about a year ago and I promised myself that I'd put it in a video if me graduating ever came up. I know it kind of came out of nowhere and didn't make much sense, but I love that clip and I'm making this video for me. I love filming things and I've been making YouTube videos since I was 14. So in high school, anytime I was given the opportunity to film something for a project, I would jump at the chance to do it. And throughout high school, I actually ended up filming a decent amount of things of varying quality and basically, I wanted to have them all in one place. In a video, I can look back on when I'm old. Like I said, this video's for me. More pretentiously, this video chronicles the early works of an aspiring filmmaker. Think of it as kind of a shitty, no-talent version of The Fablemans, which I have not seen, so forget what I just said. I am not Steven Spielberg. Because I'm making this video for me, and it's about school projects, it might not be the most entertaining, but I'll try. Part of the reason I want to share these projects is that they're kind of snapshots of that high school feeling. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep you watching. So. These are my high school directorial efforts, if you can call them that. This first one is from sophomore year, so a little bit of context, I'm going to give context for all of these. In my chemistry and physics class, we were making ice cream, using chemistry and physics. And the teacher, who was super cool, which is kind of a commonality between all of these, said we would get extra credit if we made a cooking show of what we were doing. I was the only one in the class that chose to do it. This is that. <laughs> Wait, how much ice did we have to put in? We need sodium chloride in the bag. Where's the sodium chloride? Move, Zach! The sodium chloride in the bag still, Bowden. Where is the sodium chloride at? The opposing team is beating us right now. Bowden got $10,000 on the line. You gotta hurry this up. Okay, record the temperature of the ice. Now. We were supposed to check the temperature of the ice before we put salt no, in we're, it, Bowden. We're temperature Bowden, the bag is right here. All right. We got $10,000 on the line still. How long? What did it say? Um, eight to 15 minutes. Oh my Jesus Christ. Oh my Jesus What time is it? One thirty-seven minutes We're gonna shake it, we're gonna shake it. No, we don't shake it. We don't do that yet. Stop. <laughs> Are you guys almost done? Yes. This is an interview with the winners. Okay. We're not the winners. They're going to win the $10,000. $10,000? That's what they have on cooking shows. For $10,000. Are you kidding me? Again? <laughs> Again? Again? Well, when you record me, it makes me more insecure. I do not care. No, but I'll throw it. I'll throw it. Does not have the mask over her nose. Yeah, I do. I wear my mask Working. Why does ice cream not working? It's not working. She was not wearing her mask over her nose. Full crap. I think she should be disqualified. Full crap. Neither was she. You know, not all cooking shows are competitions. Yeah, they this guy really just tried to tell me that not all cooking shows are competitions and that the cameraman is not always obnoxious. I disagree. Maybe they should I have just been divorced from my husband. If I don't win this money, I'm going to go into poverty. Please. 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 We are being spied on by the rival group. You're the cameraman. Washy. <laughs> Update. Ours is still liquid. And I am still divorced from my husband. Thank you, 
super hard. The ice cream is super hard. No, the chocolate chips are. <laughs> Would you be a doll and show it to the camera? Thank yes. You. No, that's you can't show theirs and get credit for it. <laughs> there seems to be a civil war going on in the other team. Captain America, Civil War. I love that movie! As far as I'm concerned, you're in a Riker is pulling a practical Zach, joke. Done. Zach, it's done. It is done. It's done. God, I was annoyed. Not much to say about this one, other than I don't know why I put that weird silent film filter over the final clip. There is seemingly no reason behind that decision whatsoever. The next one is from junior year, and is ironically entirely in that weird silent film filter. This was from my US history class, and so are the next few. Just an amazing teacher that gave us a lot of creative freedom. We were doing a project on the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s, and sort of the impact of that. It was kind of a big project, and we had to do a bunch of stuff. But one of the options was to demonstrate a dance from that time period. I was the only one that chose to do this. Hello, everyone. Readers, I am one of you, as you can tell by my hair. It's in the 1920s, so I'm not sure how you're seeing this. But Nonetheless, that doesn't matter, because I'm going to show you how to do the Charleston. It's actually, believe it or not, a little more complicated than the dance from Fortnite. So what you're going to begin by doing, don't do anything with your arms yet. Begin with your feet. You're going to go forward with your right, and then back with your left, but then back with your right again. So just keep doing this motion. As you can see here, maybe, I don't know, TVs were pretty bad back then. Just keep doing this. And then once you get into the groove of that, you start adding a little twisting motion when you go forward. So like that, kind of. You can't see my feet. Like that. But then continue going back when you do it. And then is where the fun begins. Because once you have that down, you can start doing the arm motions, which is the easy part and the fun part, because it requires little to no mental, and you can't really see it, but I'm gonna try and show you what it looks like when you put it all together. So you do this, but you also do the leg stuff as well. You know, you gotta do everything. You twist your feet a little, then you can get a little fun with it. No restrictions on dancing. You can have some fun. Just keep doing it like that. Uh, you're probably not even watching this. You're probably listening to it on a radio. So, uh, good luck with that. That was played in front of the class. This next one is incredibly boring. It's so boring that you might learn something. I also did this one with Bowden. I love him. You may remember him from Food Good. Stop. For this one, we had to make a video answering questions about World War One or World War II. I don't remember which. And the only way I could think of to spice it up was to have Bowden read his lines as somberly as humanly possible, and me read mine as energetic and joyously as humanly possible. Kind of a duality of man type deal. I would say enjoy, but you probably won't. The army was unprepared for the war. Estimates of the army's strength at the time ranged from 174,000 to 200,000 soldiers. That was rather small. It was ranked 17th or 19th in world size. General George C. Marshall was appointed chief of army staff in 1939. He set about expanding and modernizing the army and getting ready for war. In 1939, the total personnel in the armed forces was a little over 334,000. But by 1945, it was over 12 million. On the home front, resources, they were scarce. Food, gas, and clothing were rationed out. Communities even conducted scrap metal drives. Women got production jobs. Racism was even worse at the time due to the recent tensions. Every minority under the sun had it worse than before, but Japanese Americans arguably had it the worst. They had their rights as citizens stripped from them. The War Production Board regulated the production of materials during World War II. The war jump-started the economy. 
By the end of 1943, two-thirds of the U.S.'s economy was integrated into the war efforts. 85 million Americans purchased war bonds, covering 50 to 60 percent of the war cost. I looked really nasty and greasy during this time. This was during what I dislike to call my shaved head era. I shaved my head just to do it, you know? Check that off the bucket list. But looking back, I feel as if my sanity left with my hair. This next one was also from my US history class, and this was my final project in there. We were allowed to choose from any of the topics we had covered year round and had to give a detailed breakdown of the topic in some way. We were basically allowed to do it any way we wanted to. I chose to cover the feminist movement. And I did that by acting as an alpha male podcaster who makes a sexist comment, which he gets canceled for. And his response to getting canceled is to recite the entire feminist movement to prove he's not sexist. Here's that. What's up, alpha males? Welcome back to the Dude Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Chad. And I would just like to take this podcast to address the controversy. Uh, as you may already know, I've recently been canceled for my quote-unquote sexist comments, and uh, let's just play the clip of what I said and get it over with. I am very sexist. I am making a sexist comment right now. Insert sexist comment here. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I do not expect to be forgiven. I've been to therapy to become a better person. I've changed my favorite movie from Scarface to Legally Blonde. That shows true commitment, bros. Um, and, uh, my publicist wrote, I mean, prepared. I, I prepared that statement from the heart. I'm not sexist, dog, and I'm gonna prove it by going over the entire feminist movement. Okay, so, basically, the feminist movement is divided into, like, three waves. And uh, the first wave is the one that happened first. The second wave is the one that happened second. And the third, uh, believe it or not, happened third. So, uh, first wave. Feminist movement has lasted decades and is still going to this day in many ways. Uh, it began with the women's suffrage movement, uh, I guess. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I think that's a good thing that that happened. Because I am not sexist. Uh, the suffragette movement began in the 1820s. Many reform groups were popping up at the time. Uh, many American women began to push back against the idea of the submissive stay-at-home mother. The idea of the submissive stay-at-home mom is known by many as the cult of true womanhood. That also happens to be an alternate title for the film Bridesmaids. <laughs> <sighs> Classic. Anyways... Uh, the women's suffrage movement went on for around 100 years, give or take. A major event in that movement was the Seneca Falls Convention. It was a big deal, dude. Uh, the abolitionists convened and discussed the issue of women's rights. Uh, not that women having rights is a problem, of course. Uh, just it's a figure of speech. Like, it is an issue, like a political issue. Um, I'm not sexist. Uh, and it cited the Declaration of Independence and argued it stated women should be able to vote, uh, just because of the stuff that it says in it, and, uh, you know, equal rights for everyone. I'm not sexist. Uh, the Civil War uh, made the movement lose momentum because America can't multitask, and after the war ended, the 14th and 15th Amendment were brought in and questioned in regards to women's suffrage. Uh, the 14th Amendment defined citizens as male, uh, I think that's sexist. I don't think that's right. By the way, just putting that out there. Uh, the 15th guaranteed black men the right to vote, not women. Again, that is sexist. I do not agree with that. That is not good, bro. Uh, not good. In, uh, 1869, a new group was formed. Uh, the Avengers, I mean, the National Woman Suffrage Association. Not the Avengers. Just want to clear that up. That was a mistake. Made by me. Sorry about that. Um, it was made by Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. By the way, Susan B. Anthony, absolute G. Legendary girl boss. I loved it when she did that thing. That was awesome. Uh, fast forward to 1920. Women finally gained the right to vote. And as the president at the time probably said, Yes, queen. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Anyways... Second wave happened, and the second wave of feminism was also a good thing. It, uh, it happened in the 60s and 70s, and a big goal was stopping discrimination on the basis of sex. 
ism is bad, and I would just like to reiterate that I love and respect all women. Uh, sorry guys, just a second. No! Mom! I told you to wash my Letterman jacket! Stop telling me to move out! So what, I'm 37! <sighs> I can't stand that woman. Anyways, as I was saying, I love and support all women, and I'm not sexist whatsoever. The talking point during the second wave of feminism was uh, equal pay. And personally, I'm just going to interject with my own opinion on this. Uh, I think women should make the same as men. And I'm not just saying that because my PR team told me to. Uh, I do believe that, despite what I may have said in the past. Do not worry about what I said in the past. Third wave also happened. Uh, third wave of feminism focused on fundamentally changing the way the machine of sexism worked. Uh, basically fighting back against the patriarchy. Uh, and uh, there was no mainline stream of feminist thought anymore. Uh, speaking of tampons, this podcast is sponsored by Tampax Pearl Regular Absorbency Tampons. They are gentle on the skin. There's no chlorine, bleach, or perfumes in these babies. The Tampax Pearl Regular Absorbency Tampons feature a form-fit design that expands to fit you. Ditch those clunky pads and use Tampax Pearl Regular Absorbency Tampons. But, uh, yeah, so there was no mainline stream of feminist thought anymore because there were so many different subsets of feminism and dissenting opinions. No one agreed on anything. Basically, America. And they all, like, they couldn't, there was no, no definitive, no definitive idea of what feminism is anymore, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending on what you think about it, um, because that's your opinion. And, uh... Fourth wave also happened, and it's debated when it started. Around 2012 probs, if I had to go with what I thought. Um, and it focused on body positivity and fighting back against rape culture and sexual harassment. Uh, the hashtag MeToo movement happened. I support that, by the way. And uh, it was a big deal uh, and a major step in the right direction against rape culture. And uh, that's about it for this podcast, guys, because that's about, you know far as it goes overall i support feminism i am not sexist i cannot reiterate that enough and uh yeah i would talk about abortion but i know nothing about it who's roe who's wade i don't know see you in the next podcast bros <sighs> i have made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment i do not expect to be forgiven Moving on to senior year. This next one is from my government class and is probably my favorite school project that I've ever done. We were given a principle of government and had to make a commercial advertising that principle. Now for a quick ad break. Do you like freedom? <laughs> With our product, you can have it. Introducing limited government. All right, I'm Hands on. <laughs> God bless America. Do you value your privacy? God bless America. With the purchase of the Ninth Amendment, your privacy and other rights not explicitly stated can be protected. Can't get in without a warrant, feds. Wow. What a life. When you buy the Fourth Amendment, you can live like this too. Do you like freedom of speech? <laughs> With the purchase of the First Amendment, you can say anything you want. I think that... With our Bill of Rights bundle, you can do anything you want. Can't commit crimes. Except commit crimes. God bless America. At the low cost of being taxed for the rest of your life, you can have all of this today. We'll even throw in the power to impeach if you order within the next 30 minutes. Our product is so good, it's government approved. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks. In the cut that I turned in, there was a credit sequence, but I cut that out for privacy, so if it feels like it ends kind of abruptly, that's why. But that was definitely the most effort I put into any of these. I tried to go all out for that one because I had a crush on a girl in the class, and I kind of wanted to get her attention, I guess. I don't really know what I was thinking, though. It's not like she was going to be like, wow, this guy has mediocre at best editing skills. That's hot. I think she said no. A great thing that did come out of this project, though, is that I didn't really know this girl at all. Uh, before we were putting a group together and now she's one of my best friends. Also, here's a behind-the-scenes clip of that one Are you gonna tell me when?
Go. Okay. I think that the weather is really nice outside. Um, it's kind of actually hot. Um, but I don't like the cold, so I'm not going to complain. So I think that's all right. Is that good or more? Okay. Okay. I'm still talking, bro. Um, Holden's wearing a pink shirt and Jaden's wearing orange pants and Monroe's wearing flowers on her shirt that looks like weed. That's Jenna, by the way. This next one is from my English class. We were told we had to chronicle COVID in some way. So me and my friends chose to do a sketch where a news station interviews people from both sides of the political aisle and ask them their thoughts on various COVID related topics. I want to make clear that this is obviously satire and just a skit. It's not a skit. I'm fucking real. That's not it. I just wanted to put that in there. The sketch definitely plays into some political stereotypes, and there may or may not be some truth to it, but don't take it too seriously. Okay, welcome to the show. So as a first question, I just wanted to ask, as individuals living in Indiana, how has the pandemic affected you? You mean pandemic? Plan, I'm, um, what? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're actually aware of this, but Joe Biden actually started the pandemic in his basement for Dr. Fauci. Mm -hmm. No, I was, I was going to ask you how the pandemic affected you. Plan, pandemic. How has this pandemic affected you? Well, I will say Joe Biden's presidency has not affected me positively. I don't know about you. No, not one bit. <laughs> me neither. That's that's not what I asked. No, I believe the question he asked was, how did Sleepy Joe conceive the pandemic? That's not what I asked. Sleepy Joe and Dr. Fauci, they were in a lab, right? No one tell anybody. Yeah, so they're in a lab. It was a Chinese lab. Okay, stop. Both of you. I asked how the pandemic affected you, not any of this other stuff. Pandemic. Mm -hmm, what he said. And to answer your stupid question, the pandemic has not affected me whatsoever. I ain't got a sick once. Mm -hmm, me neither. I, I, I ate so much dirt as a kid that my immune system is pretty much impenetrable. That's right. So the pandemic hasn't affected you at all. Now, Joe Biden's presidency, on the other hand. Don't even get me started on that one, brother. <laughs> you already did. You've started. You've begun. Okay, so what are your thoughts on- Joe Biden is a disgrace of a president. Mm -hmm. The election was rigged. Mm -hmm. More like plan election. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't work. What do you mean plan election? Of course it's planned. It happens every four years. That's the whole point. All I gotta say is Trump 2026. Mm -hmm. No fork a gooder again. I have to ask, what are your thoughts on the vaccine? I think you meant to say plan scene. No, I did not mean to say plan scene. I meant what I said. It's I don't believe in it. The vaccine? Plan. Shut up. Nope. Just... So I take it you're unvaccinated. I prefer pure blood. Okay, back to the COVID related topics. Are you saying social dis distancing did not affect you at all? What's that? Ain't no such thing as social distancing when you got a family like ours. You mean brothers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually explains a lot. So what are your thoughts on masks? Hate them things. Mm-hmm. Masks are actually, they're actually a metaphor for liberals like you trying to silence us. I'm literally interviewing you on national television. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, we're actually going to take a break from you two. And we have a caller waiting. Um, she is from the political left rather than the political right like you two. And we're going to see what she has to say about this. Hello, Stacy. How are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so if it's okay with you, I'd like to start asking you some questions. How has COVID-19 affected you during the pandemic? Plan. Well, COVID-19 has certainly affected me, that's for sure. I got sick a couple times, which was rough. But the real struggle was that I couldn't go to the mall with my friends. And while I was cooped up at home, I realized all cops are bad and that the world would be a much better place if every man on the planet just ceased to exist. But that's just one girl's opinion. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, what are some ways you practice social distancing? Well, 
I mean, I've stayed six feet apart from most people at all times. Like, I haven't gone to any social gatherings. Well, except for the protests at the courthouse. The protests where there are hundreds of people pushed up against each other? Well, I don't really count that. Of course you don't. What's that supposed to mean? You know what? You're o Okay, thank you for that. That's enough. I would like to just thank our guests for coming on the show. Um, thanks for getting a little out of hand, so we're just going to end it here. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great right. I was not done talking to you, boy. If you take us off the air, I swear. Something kind of funny about this one is we used an AI voice for Stacy. I offered to do her voice, but my peers said no. But there were long silences in the Stacy conversation audio that Levi sent me. This is Levi, by the way. There were long silences, and I didn't really know what to do with them in editing. Um, what are some ways you practice social distancing? Well. Also, we only did a few takes, and me and Noah, this is Noah, by the way, there are places where you can clearly see us looking at our phones, which had our lines. That was the last high school directorial effort of mine. While those all might be cringe and unfunny at times, I had a blast making them. And as I'm making this, seeing all of those together kind of does give me that high school feeling that's almost indescribable. Nobody wants to be there, but they make the best of it. And making those videos was me making the best of it. But before you leave, I do have one more video I'd like to share. I actually didn't direct this one. On the last day of school, there were a couple of girls who were interviewing every senior that was willing about how they felt about school ending. All I did was edit this. Enjoy. How do you feel? 2.45. Fucking fantastic. Pretty good, you know, pretty good. Glad that it's over, you know. Glad that I'm uh, done with high school. What even is this dude? This is boring, like. I don't know. You know what, I probably failed too in my final. <laughs> um, I failed Look at the camera, not me. I failed my pre-cal final, and uh, <laughs> that was fire, 58%. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling right now? Great. That's it? Are you recording for your vlog? Yeah. I feel so good. Horny? <laughs> um, Levi is uh, gay for um, Jonah. He just told me a few seconds ago. Look at him. He is Reach horny. He's his pants right now for his condom. <laughs> I'm telling you. He said he was a horny. I didn't even know that. I'm about to do a look. That's why he's wearing the Spider Man shirt. I'm wearing the Spider Man shirt because it's fantastic. Well, Levi. It's also meant for a 12 year old though. And, and Zach. They, they're in a three way actually. Um, see Zach over there? Mr. Phillips. Hey, someone wanted to join, but they told him no. So, but I'm feeling great. Those guys are feeling even better, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard that you're in a threesome. Tell me what the Batman is. You guys seen that movie? <laughs> <laughs> What's with this three-way that I heard about? Where'd you hear about the three-way? How'd you find out about that? I can't say. I don't know. Um... How do you feel? Good. I don't care about today. It's just another day of school. <laughs> I'm just gonna wake up tomorrow in my own bed and not get out. So. Okay. Okay. I'm quite sad. Um, if it weren't for the preschoolers, I would be completely fine. But I'm gonna miss them, and I'm really sad about it. But it's okay, I guess. You ready to get the fuck out of here? Yes, sir. <laughs> what? Who is ready it? to not get pulled over going to school anymore? Yes. <laughs> How do you feel about school being over? I didn't do it, Your Honor. <laughs> um, I thought you were going to eat it. I <laughs> <laughs> just jumped on your throat. School being over, it's weird because I hate this place. <laughs> but I'm going to miss it quite a bit. Fuck this fucking hell. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm alive. Is that it? Yes, I feel like I'm about done with school. Are you sure you're alive? You I look pretty so. pale. I'm always pale. <sighs> okay. Point five of Connor. This is a big. That is that high school feeling. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you. And dear future self, if you're watching this, just remember you're not Steven Spielberg. You're Zachary Phillips, director of Food Good. School being over. It's weird because I hate this place. <laughs> But I'm gonna miss it quite a bit. Alexa, stop!